Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Joanne and this is Luxury and Moderation, where we appreciate the finer things in life without going overboard. Today, I'm talking about the five mistakes I made while starting my makeup collection. I started collecting makeup about 10 years ago, when YouTube makeup gurus were just getting started. I definitely learned a lot, but also made a few mistakes. So hopefully by sharing the mistakes I made, you can avoid these same mistakes and start your makeup collection on the better foot. The first mistake I made was buying way too many brushes. I have so many eyeshadow and face brushes and I don't know what to do with them all. A lot of people say makeup brushes are an investment. They're a tool that you'll use for many years instead of product that you'll use up over time. So it's okay to spend a little bit more and buy better quality ones. Well, my recommendation is to start with very few brushes, and they don't have to be expensive ones either. For example, for blush brushes, the one that I use the most is this EcoTools one that came in a three pack at CVS and was about $25. Even though I bought a lot of angled blush brushes, I never liked the way it lays the blush on me. So I just reach for this blush brush every day and all my other blush brushes go to waste. On the other hand, this MAC 187 brush. This is a brush that a lot of YouTube gurus or friends raved about as the best brush for foundation. They demonstrated how to stipple on the foundation all over your face, so I ran out and bought my own. However, this brush just didn't work for me. It shed every time I used it, and even though I expected better from a MAC brush, I thought this might stop after I wash it a few times. However, even after washing for five to ten times, this brush still always sheds whenever I used it. Also, stippling foundation just takes too long for me, so I haven't touched this brush in about seven years. So my recommendation is to find a few brush styles that you'd like to try and figure out which shape works best for you and your face. Then, once you find the style and shapes that you actually like, you can slowly upgrade to the designer brushes and not waste your money on anything you're not going to use. The next mistake I made was buying the wrong size brushes for my face. For example, this MAC 252 eye brush is way too big for my eyelids. You can see that it covers the entire space, so I really can't do any detailed work. I really had to find a smaller eyeshadow brush that would fit my eyelids instead of buying the brush that everybody else was recommending. The eyeshadow brush that I use the most is this tiny Sephora one. You can see that the size of the eyeshadow brush is very small. And a lot of people with larger eyelids will use this as an eyeliner brush or to smudge out their lower liner. But for me, with my smaller eyelids, this eyeshadow brush gives me the precision for me to lay down the darker eyeshadow I want only on my eyelids and not anywhere else. You can see the really big difference between these two eyeshadow brushes. Now these are both Wayne Goss brushes. The bigger blending brush is the number 19 and the smaller one is number 5. Here's a close-up of the difference in size. I really do appreciate how small the number 5 is for precise blending in my crease. The third mistake I made was thinking that all lip colors look the same on everyone. When I first started watching YouTube, x teeners lipsticks always looked so beautiful. I wanted to know every single lip color she wore and would run out and try to replicate it. However, they never looked the same on me. After trying and failing many times, I realized that her lip color and my lip color just weren't going to come out with the same result. Under this bright fuchsia lipstick that I'm wearing today, my natural lips are much less pigmented. I figured that x teeners naturally pigmented lips were a much different shade than my own. 
This is also true when I went out and bought the Tom Ford Spanish Pink lip color that Rayview absolutely raved about. This Tom Ford lipstick color looked so great on her and she said it was her My Lips But Better color. So when I bought it, I had really high expectations. But on my lips, it looked so terrible. I figured that I would make it work. Maybe it would look better in the summer when my skin tone was a little bit warmer and a little bit darker. Or maybe it would look better in the winter when my skin was a little bit lighter. But no matter when I tried it, it never looked good on me. So you can see what I'm talking about. On the right, you can see how pasty this lipstick looks on me. And on the left is the swatch image from the Sephora website. It was much lighter than I thought it would be. And for some reason, it just doesn't go with my undertone. And it accentuates the folds on my lips. So I think it's a bad formula anyways. This lipstick turned out to be a complete fail for me and a waste of $55. And now it's just a lip color that I never wear. So my recommendation is to learn about new colors from your friends, from YouTubers, but really go and test to see if the shade is right for you before you buy it. Sometimes it's just not going to turn out how you see it on other people. The next mistake I made was settling for non-pigmented product. When I first started collecting makeup, I bought a lot of CoverGirl eyeshadow and blushes. The eyeshadow was very powdery and it would take me five swipes to get the blue color that showed in the pan onto my eyelid. These days, both drugstore and prestige companies have really stepped up their game to give us good pigmented product. There's a lot more people doing swatches online or letting you know which products just don't meet the bar. Don't settle for products that don't meet your expectation in terms of texture or pigmentation. The last mistake I made was not knowing my makeup style. By this, I mean I didn't know in the beginning that I was the kind of person who would rather do a one color eyeshadow look than blend out five different colors on my eyelids. I would rather sleep in a few more minutes instead of doing contour and highlight every day. Now, for a special occasion, of course, I do enjoy spending a little bit more time on my makeup. But for my everyday life, I don't need that many products. So I figure I also don't need to invest that much money into all these different products that I'm not going to use every day. In the beginning, my recommendation would be to take it very slow. And over the course of a few months and even a full year, really figure out how makeup is going to fit into your everyday life. If you're a student with no morning classes, you might take the time to blend out five different eyeshadows. But once you become a working adult, that routine might change and you will need to adjust your routine and the products that you use. Thank you for watching and like this video if you learned something. Please comment below on something you learned while starting your makeup collection and I'll see you in the next video. Don't settle for, don't settle for powdery products. Don't settle for powdery products.